O B T. Yes, that's right. It's back. We're back. And here we go. Our favorite canned rock music. We haven't had the canned rock music in a minute, I think. I know. We go on the road and I miss this. This should be my ringtone for you, Mace. Oh, God. Really? (laughs) Why would you do that? Your ringtone is ducks quacking. No, it's not. That's not everyone's ringtone. It's just one ringtone. (laughs) I have a bunch of ringtones. Okay. All right. Do I have a special ringtone yet or no? Don't answer that. (laughs) It is Orange and Blue today. It's Cecil Amy, Andrew Mason, and Mace. The Denver Broncos have interest in Jaden Daniels. They're working out Jaden Daniels after the LSU Pro Day. Not the next day, because they got some traveling to do. But how realistic is the Jaden Daniels conversation? Well, it depends on how willing Washington is to move down from number two, because that's where it stands. I don't think it's that realistic. Also, Jaden Daniels doesn't necessarily fit smoothly with what Sean Payton would prefer to do schematically. But at the same time, there's a pre- there are pretty deep connections between the Broncos and the LSU program. Very deep connections with Jaden Daniels and Jamar Kane, who was at Arizona State when Daniels was there, and then was at LSU when Daniels transferred there. So I think you do your due diligence, but I don't think he is as realistic a possibility as some of the other quarterbacks, even though the realistic possibility on all of them means a significant and Maybe a little bit painful trade-up. Yeah, and when you talk about painful, what's the price? Okay, we're going to get to that. But with Jaden Daniels specifically, Mace, he's my number one quarterback this year because he comes in with Lamar Jackson talent. And, yes, uh, he does not really fit Sean Payton. I fully understand that. However, I would love to see Sean Payton work with a talent like a Jaden Daniels because I think Daniels can be more advanced as a passer, very bright kid, and they're going to know the most about him. Today might just be a catch-up kind of situation Mm -hmm. with them yeah i think there's something to that i'd say the broncos probably have more intel on Jaden daniels before sitting down with him than they did any of these other quarterbacks going into the process just because of the connections that they have with the lsu program so denver's working at an advantageous point i think also um Look, from the football character perspective, from the leadership perspective, forget about uh, the arm talent, forget about the the mobility. Uh, football character and leadership, Jaden Daniels is the kind of person you want in the building. I mean, that's uh, I'd like to think you can adjust things for him, especially what he is going to be as a young player, which is learning how to operate in the pocket and then see where he goes. He's a pretty special talent, and... Um, it's, you know, it's also interesting to me that um, Washington with Cliff Kingsbury appears to be so high on him as well. That would be a fascinating partnership if it comes to pass. Yeah, and we know that Cliff would love to work with Caleb Williams again. That's probably not going to happen. What's probably else not going to happen is I don't think that Adam Peters, formerly of the Denver Broncos, is not going to move off of that pick. You'd have to mm-hmm. just break him and quite honestly i don't think the broncos have enough they have enough to move up to three if they want they have enough to move up to four if they want two might be a completely different story especially with if peters loves daniels as much as i've heard he loves daniels getting up to two might require three ones this year next year 2026 a couple of twos and patrick sertan oh I don't think that's realistic. I love Jaden Daniels, but that's a haul. It's a lot. I'm not going to say I mean, too much because if he's the guy, what's the price on if you could draft the guy, the next Lamar Jackson or whatever? Like, there really is no price, but that's that's tough to stomach. It is. I mean, obviously, the primacy of the quarterback position means that you are willing to pay a potential heavy price. And historically, with trade ups, for quarterbacks, there is a premium in, in which you sacrifice more 
over the last 10, 15 years of draft trades. You sacrifice more to move up to get a quarterback than you would other positions. The QB premium is what it's all about. And also because if a team doesn't have a quarterback, they're searching for it. They're, and let's face it, there is going to be at least one team very keen on a quarterback that doesn't find that guy in the draft. You know, yes. this is it's musical chairs and there aren't enough quarterbacks to go around. And in the end, somebody and it may well be the Broncos might be the one that doesn't have a chair, at least a chair among the first five or six quarterbacks taken in the draft. Yeah, and you and I've talked off air. We'll bring that conversation here to this show. Like I I just think there's a staring contest now between Minnesota and Denver. It's like they're looking at each other. Who's going to make that first move? And, well, you know, it, it's – I think luck favors the bold, and I think that if you are going to make that move, if you have identified a guy, you make the move as soon as you can. We like to say fortune favors the bold, but when you look back on it, was the bold trade up for the New York Jets when they moved up six years ago for Sam Darnold? Was that worth it? No. <laughs> but then again, think of it this way. The Broncos were keen on Sam Darnold back then. John Elway really coveted him. Mm-hmm. When the Jets made that trade up with the Indianapolis Colts, and they did it, I think, what, about two weeks before the draft happened that year, the Broncos were caught flat-footed. Now, which team would you argue was in worse shape as a result of it? I mean, the thing is, neither one won that in the end. Both teams went on struggling. It's just that the Jets did it while taking a swing, and the Broncos, metaphorically speaking, at least at the quarterback position, didn't really come up to bat until they took the huge swing on Russell Wilson uh, in as an 11-year veteran. And by the way, you see some rumblings out there. Oh, maybe the Broncos should wait a year and Dak Prescott might be available in free agency. Color me skeptical on that one, Cease, mm-hmm. because at that point, Dak Prescott's going to be a 10-year veteran, right? Do you really want to do this? We heard Greg Penner talk about trying to build a successful program, and he also talked about drafting and developing as the way – to ultimately have sustained success. So would waiting and then trying to bring in a 10-year veteran like Dak Prescott, presumably with a cap number of well over $50 million a year, is that really something that sounds like what Greg Penner's vision is for this organization? I'd say not. Yeah, I'd say no uh, as well. And I know two things when it comes to Dak Prescott. As someone who's very close to the Cowboys – one, from their side, from the team side, um, they're thinking about extending him. Also, yeah. two, from the player side. I'm going to make an assumption, uh, but Justina Anderson has already report- reported that they're thinking about extending him. Mm-hmm. That's probably from the player side. So I know from a team side they'd like to extend him. Josina is reporting today they'd like to extend him, and that's likely from the player side. Could be from the team side as well. But either way, when you hear these type of things, you're like, you just wait next year and Dak Prescott, well, They might just lock up Dak Prescott. (laughs) Yeah, and then the option's gone, and then what are you doing? Right. Sitting around waiting, kicking the can. I hate this kick the can stuff. Oh, just wait. Just next next year. It's too much. Not if you identify the right guy. The Sam Darnold thing didn't work out because of the fit, and it's the Jets. The Trey Lance thing didn't work out because of the fit, and, well, he just didn't work with Kyle Shanahan. What would have been different had they drafted Mac Jones? I look at maybe what the Chiefs did on draft day. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mace. Uh They did that on draft day, and the Bills did on draft day. So where I would like a trade to the number three pick next week, I think maybe the shark move is you let everyone run around. Okay, okay. Where's our point to strike? And maybe you do it on draft day. We might be waiting a month for the Broncos to make the move. The problem is then you run the risk of someone else kind of jumping in front of you like that the risk on that is what happened back in 2018 like i mentioned the broncos i think were content to wait for draft day to happen and then try to move up for sam darnold and then they got jumped and so as the draft neared 
they reached out to the New York Giants. But famously, Dave Gettleman would not take the call at number two because Gettleman, the Giants general manager at the time, had to have him some Saquon Barkley at the expense of what probably would have been a mind-blowing offer from the Denver Broncos to go from five to two. Yep. Yep. And it didn't happen. Um, Chris chimes in with something. Uh, again, we talked about it privately. The the shoe size, the shoe thing with uh, <laughs> Sean Payton. And for me, the first thing when you told me that, Mace, I just thought, is he getting him a pair of Jordans? I know he's the Oregon guy, but Sean Payton's the Jordan guy. So, like, uh-huh. is that the case? You know, I, I – um, tried to get my friends some Jordans when I buy collections that I can't sell and don't fit me, obviously. Mm-hmm. So it's like maybe that's what SP's doing with the free shoes. I have to pay for the collections. Obviously, Sean gets his for free. Yeah. I mean, I, I wish I had Sean's Jordan hookup. I'll I'll admit that. Whew. It'd be nice. <laughs> Is that what Vic Fangio said? It'd be nice. Like, yeah. Hey, mm-hmm. I, I would take, hey, I mean, just I'd, I'd take one free pair here. Oh my gosh, really? The the Vic, <laughs> the 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 Teletubbies sunshine Vic Fangio thing. Oh my god! Every gosh. day, every day. Oh. I'd take that hook up every day. Although, um, as I get older, Mace, I like you know we like dressing up on this show, and sometimes uh, we do. I don't want to look like this guy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, today I'm just wearing the black T-shirt. You know, uh, I went around <laughs> about when we're at the owners' meetings party. You know, we're we're dressed up. We look nice. You had a nice jacket on, right? I had some nice jackets this week. I had the blue one. I had the uh, what color was that? Like eggplant plum. Plum. Plum's a good word for that. Plum. Yeah, plum. We're you plum hope, crazy. Yeah, hope the Broncos can get a plum quarterback prospect here from this draft. Yeah, yeah. Um, Edward chimes in on something that Sean Payton actually talked to Ian about at the breakfast table on Monday about Ian saying, Hey, J-, and they, they clipped on Twitter. They clipped the part where Ian Rappaport, like Jared Stidham is a very good quarterback. I have a different opinion. And Sean told Ian to his face and Ian kind of pushed back a little bit. I don't, I wouldn't say that. And he's like, no, no, it's realistic. Moving up is realistic. Even though Ian had, you know, pushed out that. Last week, whatever day. Yeah, it's it's realistic, but it's going to cost a lot. And if you do move up, either be prepared to say goodbye to your first round picks in 25 and 26, or be prepared to say goodbye to one of those first round picks and Pat Sertan. Right. Mm-hmm. If you're going to do that. Now, that being said, I think the Broncos would rather trade the picks than Sertan. Bird in the hand versus two in the bush, right? You know, it's... Pat Sertan is a proven player at a premium position, although one could argue whether corner isn't quite as important as it was at one point because we see more shell coverage concepts around the NFL. Sure. But at the same time, you watch something like Pat Sertan going up, uh, you know, going up against Jamar Chase back in 2021. Yeah, that's the sort of thing that reminds you, hey, premium player. When you see Pat Sertan and Devontae Adams and it's kind of tit for tat and ends up as a stalemate, you know, that's when you realize, yeah, Pat Sertan has some value, some extreme value, and you really don't want to lose that. So uh, let's actually make a transition here talk about Josh Reynolds because I think it's fair to wonder if Josh Reynolds coming in means that maybe Cortland Sutton could be included in a deal. I mean, I'd say you're not talking about really changing what you're giving in the top end in terms of value, but does Cortland Sutton in a draft trade up, is he worth say a third round pick if you're making a deal what do you think yes and if you're a team that you know couldn't get your hands on one of those top three maybe you don't know yet about malik washington like uh, all right so you're a team out there a guy like Horton sutton's gonna make some sense so um you know I, I look at it as you give yourself options the reynolds thing is curious to me 
And he's a fine possession receiver. He's been around forever, you know, mid-round pick, Texas A&M, all that. What concerns me, Mace, is last year in the title game to go to the Super Bowl against the 49ers, he had a drop on third down that killed a second half drive. He had a drop on fourth down that killed a second half drive, obviously, because it was fourth down. So in the crunchiest of crunch time moments, I'm not talking about Boulder crunchy, but like the crunchiest moment that you possibly could have to go to the Super Bowl in the second half, Josh Reynolds is out there dropping passes left and right. Yeah, Josh Reynolds, if you count the playoffs last year, Josh Reynolds had seven drops in 55 catchable passes. Okay? So that is literally a drop once every eight catchable passes. Okay? That's terrible. Yes, that is. Okay? You know, Jerry Judy absolutely maligned in Denver the last two years had a drop every 18 catchable passes. And people are like, oh, drop, drop. Lost their mind. The, the, the Jerry Judy drop narrative was formed in his rookie year, and he hasn't been that guy since then. There's a lot of things that you can say about Jerry Judy that are honest critiques, but saying that his guy drops a lot of passes isn't one of them. Unfortunately for Josh Reynolds, the drop rate is a concern. I think that's part of the reason why you look at a guy who's a pretty solid player lingering on the market until here on March on March twenty uh, seventh. You know we're you know, we're 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 two weeks into the new league year. We're sixteen days beyond the start of the quote unquote legal tampering period. So we're very much in third wave. So that's one that is one concern that I have about Josh Reynolds coming in is the drop rate. Now, that being said, he can be a solid starter. He's a good blocking receiver, so that's going to fit something the Broncos want to do. And now you start putting together, and maybe you can see a receiving core that could operate without Cortland Sutton, although I will say this. I've said this before. I'll say it again. You can't rely on Tim Patrick being healthy if he's out there He's a bonus. That's nice, but that's not a primary plan. Maybe what you do think, though, is if you move on from Cortland Sutton, you include him in a trade up, can you function? Can you say, okay, one of Tim Patrick, Brandon Johnson, and Jalen Virgil is going to deliver? I think there's a good chance that one of those three can emerge. And then you've got Marvin, and then you're really hoping Marvin Mims Jr. can take the leap. And I believe he can take take the leap. That's another thing. You know, if can Marvin Mims Jr. be a wide receiver one? I'd say so. Yes. And yeah. then can Josh Reynolds be a wide receiver two in the mix? Certainly, although you want him to become more reliable with his hands. Right. And Reynolds has always been a wide receiver two. And we know with Tim Patrick, he's just got to stay healthy. So if mm-hmm. he could stay healthy, he works into the mix with that. I mean, he has wide receiver one talent. He's never been healthy enough to show it. But, like, you've got options again you you've got flexibility if you're the broncos maneuverability mace Mm -hmm. is what they would say and i I enjoy that here as we're kind of in crunch time once the pro days wrap up and we will definitely talk more about the next day but we know after the Jaden daniels pro days the broncos are still going to be busy they are the meetings the draft meetings in earnest start on monday they've had draft meetings but the last few weeks the focus has been on getting around out and about getting to pro days, actually having individual workouts, talking with players. You've still got some top 30 visits to come with people with prospects coming to sanctuary health training center. But what the focus goes to now is those draft meetings here starting on Monday. And then you've got basically three weeks of buckling down and then you and then you head into the draft. So this is where you're going to set the board. You, you've already you've got a decent idea what it's going to look like, but this is where you're going to set it. And this is also where you're really cracking uh, to get uh, more intel. They certainly did. There's you know at the league meetings, there's a certain amount of intel gathering going on at the general manager and coach level. It's one of the things that happens. That's why you hear rumblings. Oh, did Minnesota and Arizona work on the framework of a deal? at uh, the league meetings. It's possible they did. It's also possible that the Broncos in Arizona worked on the framework of a deal 
at the league meetings or the Broncos, yep. and the Patriots certainly start putting together the framework of a deal. All these things, you know, we can't confirm because, you know, some things aren't going to leak out, but conversations are had at league meetings. And one thing that we can't deny is that the buzz around the Broncos around the league is that they want to take an earnest shot at moving up. Yep. Something uh, it's been out there for a minute. <laughs> uh, yep. Boy. Just have the radar up, man. Just have the radar up. We'll see if the Broncos do that. Jordan mm -hmm. loves your Ted Lasso sticker, by the way, Mace. Appreciate that. Believe. If you want a quarterback, do you believe that the Broncos can make a move up? Or do you believe that Bo Nix is the guy and that they can maybe not only stand pat, but possibly trade down and get Bo Nix and get some extra draft capital? I mean, this is these are all the things that are in play right now. It's pot, you know, you want this to be ending with somebody that you love especially in terms of Sean Payton wanting a quarterback that will probably be the person to whom his legacy is tied. But there is a scenario where you can be very much in like, like with Bo Nix, if not love and you make a trade down and you get him 10 to 15 picks later and you get some extra draft capital and you're able to sort of take a shot at building uh building the roster and then keep your draft comp point for next year. That matters as well. By the way, speaking of draft capital for next year, the Josh Reynolds acquisition, according to a uh, Nick court who uh, handle who uh, over and over the cap keeps track of the compensatory calculus, the, the Josh Reynolds acquisition effectively takes the Broncos out of the mix for compensatory picks in 2025. We've talked about this. No team had fewer comp picks from 2006 through 2021 than the New Orleans Saints with Sean Payton. Sean Payton, in his calculus, does not care about getting comp picks. So he'd rather get the player that he wants rather than, oh, let's get a player who was cut who doesn't count toward the comp pick calculus. That's the way he rolls. And so don't expect the Broncos to have any extra selections in the 2025 draft. Mm -mm -mm. Did they do a deal with Arizona? And is Arizona on the lookout for one of those receivers? When I talked to Jonathan Gannon, he wouldn't give me specifics. But Mace, I talked to an evaluator uh, today. And the comp, mm -hmm. the comp for Roma Dunze, mm -hmm. drum roll please, Larry Fitzgerald. Oh. So can you sell 12 and you'll have the maneuverability so you can move back to 12. Uh, didn't the Dolphins do that with Jaden Waddle? Uh, anyway, like, so you can move back and then move back up. Like, you're going to have some maneuverability. But if you if you believe, as an evaluator I talked to in the NFL believes, that Roma Dunze's best comp is Larry Fitzgerald, <laughs> if you're Arizona, you got to love that. you got to love that. The decision makers in Arizona weren't around for Fitz. But if you're talking about somebody that you can sell to your fan base, somebody who has some Larry Fitzgerald qualities and – the other thing on Fitzgerald is it wasn't just the physical skill set, but the tenacity that he had, the preparation that he had. If Podunze's got the same level of mental acuity and diligence to his work as Fitz had, I mean, no brainer, right? That's the thing. These receivers, it's a heck of a receiver class. I mean, these 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 top three receivers in particular, I mean, there's a lot to love in these players. And they give you roster building value because of the difference in per year cost for them compared with an elite receiver. By the way, like speaking of cost of receivers, Jerry Judy, his average annual value on the Cleveland Browns contract is a little bit north of 19 million. Josh Reynolds is seven million. That's his average annual value. Is Reynolds as good as Jerry Judy? No. Like I said, I mentioned the drop rate. Is Josh Reynolds barely one-third of Jerry Judy? No. He's probably 80% of Jerry Judy. 75 to 80%. We talked about this at safety, that you move on from Justin Simmons, but P.J. Locke plus Brandon Jones is cheaper than 
the mo- than the amount that you cleared to move on from Simmons. You're playing some money ball here with this roster, looking for values. And so don't be surprised if there are a few more moves coming for the Broncos that are this type of player where you're saying, okay, yeah, maybe we lost somebody, but are we replacing are we replacing them with 80% of the player at you know 20% of the cost? That's the sort of thing you're looking at. Mm-mm-mm. We're looking at May Day tomorrow on March 28th. Drake ha! May. Yes, that's right. And love course, the Drake. Michael Penix Jr. Lots to get to there. Mason and I are always learning, so we're always talking and we're always listening. And we've got some opinions to get to. That's coming up on tomorrow's show. Programming note: OBT two from last night. Some technical issues on my end. We've fixed them. OBT2 my end too. We'll my fire. end too. Right, right. We got it, hey, we got it all right. We're traveling. We got it. We got it fixed, baby. So, like, that's that's firing at 6 p.m. YouTube exclusive OBT2, our laid back show. Um, so we got it. Uh, we got it all for you, Mace. No matter what mm-hmm. you want, we've got it here for you. Yeah, exactly. Do you want laid back? Although I think this is kind of laid back. I'm sitting here on a pool deck. Like, if you go over my shoulder, about uh, a couple of hundred yards is the Atlantic Ocean. So. You see the palmettos in the background here. I'm living my best life right now. Okay. Um, probably, probably come back here uh, tomorrow. Although we might put this, might put the show in the can a little early tomorrow, just based on my uh, my own schedule with other stuff going on. But no, that's good. Looks good. Feels good. I'm actually surprised that the Wi-Fi has held up out here. That's very encouraging. Don't speak too soon. <laughs> He's Mace, and I'm Cease. You got to help us out on YouTube. How do you do that, Mace? Like, like, comment, share, share, subscribe, subscribe. hit that, hit notification, that notification bell, bell so that you, so you never, never miss, miss a vid. vid. I messed it, up. Yeah, you got to go. Remember, we're doing right, right, our right, your left as you're watching on television. Never, all right, miss a vid. vid. Let's do that one never, more time. Never, let's never, say three, ne- three, two, one. Never. never Miss, Miss a bid. Yes. Yes. All right. I think we're getting there. I think we're getting there. We'll see. <laughs> All right. The, the lag. The lag might have uh, messed us up there too on the uh, right. on the live stuff. Stuff. So hey, we do what we do. We're and here we... for you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Cuckoo. Tomor- By the way, tomorrow is four weeks until day one of the NFL draft. It's here, like them apples. Yeah, it's here. Yep, yep, yep. It's coming soon. That's right. OBT is a BFD's Mace MCs. Everyone, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, and would you please stay frosty?